Do you want to live a long, healthy life? Be able to live your future years doing the things that you love and that you enjoy? I'm 58, and I ultimately like you. I want to look good, feel good, and play good in my future years. Exercise and the proper combination of exercise is the best anti-aging intervention that we have. I'm going to explain how to get the most out of your exercise and calibrate it just so that you get the best effects and results from it. But before I do that, my name is Andrew Colasco, and from here on out, I am your personal, your very own longevity coach for You Man 50 Plus. Every week, I'm here to give you the no BS, no nonsense, insider info on the modalities and the protocols that really work and move the needle for guys 50 plus. We're going to increase your strength, your overall lean muscle mass, your cardiovascular robustness, and your overall sense of well-being. So keep it locked here. Subscribe if you haven't already and leave a like. Let's get into it. To live long and strong means the right balance of VO2 max training and resistance training. That is your weight training. At age 58, this is how I train and this is how you can train too. In this video, I will show you how to build a nice muscular athletic form and still be able to have those muscles have a purpose. Have them do something that's going to enhance your health and make it better. Not just look good. Let's try to do everything that we can with your exercise to get it just so, including that aerobic capacity that you have due to overall robustness of your cardiovascular system that you need to have those healthy years in front of you. We're gonna do both. Number one, we're gonna start with resistance training. That is often referred to as weight training, but you can use bands or your own body weight. That's why it's more aptly called resistance training. And under resistance training, there's a subsection, okay? That's gonna be functionality training. We are gonna do weighted step ups and things like weighted curtsies to help give you that stability that you need. You simply can't put off resistance training until next week or next month or next year. Sarcopenia, the degradation of your muscles, as well as osteopenia, the loss of the bone density of your bones is something you can't mess around with. It is something that is gonna deteriorate, and if you don't work at it, then these are real diseases that will happen and you'll atrophy, and you'll not be in the condition that you need to to really enjoy life like you want to. Having active muscles is gonna help you with mobility, plus building a strong skeletal muscle system is gonna help you in all that you do. Because if you have a fall or you trip and you get hurt, you know, sadly, after age 65, if you fall, you break a hip or a femur, your mortality rate over the next year is only about 35%. So in the next 12 months, you have like a 35% chance of passing away from breaking a major bone like that. You've got to put in the overall system to protect yourself, to keep yourself safe and keep yourself mobile and keep yourself in the game, the long game. Resistance training is not only if, you know, if you didn't pass away, well, you might end up in a walker or you can end up in a wheelchair. You know, you don't have to wait until you see in the physiotherapist, you're trying to fix this. Let's get ahead of the curve because the more we can get our bodies prepared with the muscles and ward off that sarcopenia, our muscle deterioration, the stronger we're going to be in the greater health span and the greater the future years doing what we love are still going to be there for you. As well, the most important part of blood sugar regulation is having muscles big enough for those muscles to go into. That's how you dispose of glucose. That's how it regulates your insulin, your overall sensitivity to insulin and keep you from being insulin resistant, which you do not want. You see, the body is very smart. It regulates great. And, you know, if, if you're in a normal, healthy individual, then you've got about a teaspoon of glucose going through your body. That's that much. Now, if you're off by one teaspoon extra going through your system, then you can have type 2 diabetes, also known as syndrome X or metabolic syndrome. Or you could actually be in such a case that you would have to have your digits amputated. Now, this is pretty extreme, I know, but this is what will keep you metabolically flexible is having the muscles in place so that you can use the insulin properly and use the glucose and keep your overall body functioning in a healthy way into your future years. Now, for those exercises, I'm not going to go through them all just that you need to do them, of course, but you can check out this video right here and that is gonna give you a whole bunch, fact, 25 exercises for 2025 that you can do 
to keep your muscles growing, to keep building those muscles. That's going to be great. As well, I want you to watch this video here of me training Gordy. Now, I'm showing Gordy how to do step ups. He's got two kettlebells on the side and he's going up very intentionally and then he's stepping down very intentionally. This is going to help him with the stability. Also, look at this video here. These are weighted curtsy step backs, okay? And you can see this is going to help with your overall lateral movement. It's going to help you with your overall stability and your mobility. So these are ones you should be adding to your arsenal of weighted resistance training as well. Next part of your training is VO2 max training. Not going to refer to it as the nebulous term as cardio because cardio isn't really a measurement, okay? And it's not just about burning calories. Some people think, well, I'm doing cardio just so I can burn off calories. We want to calibrate it more sensitively than that. And with VO2 max, what it is actually doing, it's measuring the amount of oxygen that your blood can use to generate energy. This is a real metric that will let you know not only how your lifespan is going to be, but how your health span is going to be. So if they're going to be quality years, not only living longer. So we're able to dial in it just right so that we can get the most capacity for you to get your cardiovascular system in the best shape that we possibly can. There's an overwhelming amount of evidence to show that your VO2 is going to be your greatest indicator. So not only about how well you're going to be active and be able to perform and do the things you want to do in those future years and longevity as well. Okay. So it's, it's a double hit there. It's going to be quality plus length, which is what we want. No sense living longer unless we're going to have them be quality here. So how do we get into this? Okay. So zone two training, that's going to be about 80 to 85% of your week. And you're going to spend that, you know, you could do it rucking. You could do it uh, on the treadmill. You could do it on the row machine. You can do it on the bike. What you want to do is you want to get about 60, 70% of your heart rate. If you have a smartwatch, you know, keep in mind, those are all 25 to 35% off. You can monitor it that way to the best of its ability. But another way to do it, if you don't want to, you know, have a physical monitor of it, you can tell by if you're having a conversation with someone, but it's kind of hard to do, then you're probably in that zone. If you can talk, but you can't sing, then you're in zone two. That's a good way to indicate it. So I have a minimum of three separate days where I'm doing an hour per day in that zone two training. What's great about this is you're not busting your ass in some fitness class where you're doing a bunch of different things and it's all hyped up and all of that. And it's hard to maintain. You just have to put in the time. Okay. Like I said, I'm doing three hours a week. I would recommend if you can do more to do more, but you want to fit into your lifestyle the best that you can. That's going to give you a wide base. What you want in addition to your wide base with that zone two training is a tall peak. So you're going to do VO2 max training. For this, I do the Norwegian 4x4, which you may have heard from. That's Norway's Olympic ski team. That's what they use, and it's made very famous. So although you they're elite athletes, this is good for anybody. Just it's it's at your ability. So basically, a five-minute warm-up, then you go four minutes all out. About 80% of your heart rate, 80% of your capacity, you want to keep it consistent. So you can put it on, you know, six miles an hour, 6.5 miles an hour or seven, whatever works. And at the treadmill, and then you just keep it consistent. And then three minute break, your heart rate gets back down to around 100 beats per minute. And then four more minutes, three minute break, four more minutes, three minute break, four more minutes, cool down. Okay, this is going to be a sense, uh, you know, an interval training, but it's going to get you that peak that we talked about. So that is actually a short workout, right? That's only 30 minutes of working out with a five minute warm up, a five minute cool down. So it's quite ideal, but you've, it's intense. Okay. It's the one that I probably put off the most. It's the one that intimidates me the most, but you put in the time and you do it and it's going to grow and be great payoffs for you. Okay, so let's talk about how we get the whole package between the VO2 max training and your resistance training all into a given week. I do my resistance training of course, that's my weight training. I do that every third day. So I don't have like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday workout. What it is, it's a rolling week, okay? And what that is allowing to do is two things. Number one, it takes 72 hours for protein synthesis to take place. So you are building and recovering 
over the next three days. And then that's when I'm back at the gym, okay? Otherwise, you could be overtraining. Your muscles need to recover, especially when you're in 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Okay, you need a little bit more time. Plus, what that allows you to do, you got those two days in between your weights, your resistance training. So on those days, you're doing your zone two training, you're doing your VO2 max training, and you're able to still get in that recovery mode. The number two reason we need to be careful about how we are breaking up and delineating between our resistance training and our VO2 max training is to keep in mind that training is catabolic. You are in a catabolic state when you're exercising and training. That is your sympathetic state. So your nervous system is in a sympathetic state. What does that mean? Well, it's often called fight or flight. So it's a heightened part of your body that raises us up to meet the demands. When you are doing your cardio, you know, on the same day as you're doing your weights, what happens is you're staying in that sympathetic state too long. So the recent research has come out and it's showing that you can lose 30 to 50% of the effectiveness of the weight training that's building the muscle when you're putting vigorous cardio, VO2 max training, on the same day. What's happening is you're staying in that sympathetic mode, that heightened nervous system mode too long, and your body is, like I said, catabolic and it can't recover. And it's not going to, it has to spread it out too thin, okay? You're not a Spartan in 300, okay? And you're not killing two birds with one stone. You are doing it in an efficient way if you're getting, you know, you're trying to do your heightened cardio and you're trying to do your heavy weight training, they cancel each other out. If you do them on separate days, you are gonna get better results, you're gonna build better muscles, and you're gonna build a better cardiovascular system when they are separated out on different days. So make sure you follow that. It's, it's an important nuance, because you don't wanna waste your time at the gym, you wanna make the most out of it and have it be the most efficient. Everybody's only got so much time, let's use it right. This balance of BO2 training with your resistance training is going to be the most efficient way for you to get the most out of any exercising that you do. This is gonna help increase your health span, your lifespan. It's gonna help you ward off diseases. It's gonna help keep your immunity system strong. It's gonna help keep your nervous system strong. And these are all the things that are gonna give you the best future years. Now, I wanna hear your feedback. I want your comments. Please put them in the description below. Put them in the chat there. We are gonna help each other. There's other men in there that wanna hear from you. They want your advice, they want your insights, they want your experience. You know, any kind of reflection can help other men. It's building a sense of community. And I read and I respond to all your comments. Plus, they help me come up with ideas for topics for future videos. So it's important that you put your comments in there. Please do that now as well. Leave a like, let me know that you like this content. That makes me feel great as well. If you haven't already subscribed, be sure to. I want you here every week as we work together to optimize and maximize your future years, giving you the best possible years ahead of you that we can. So I look forward to seeing you again here next week.